Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely incredible day. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. Tether, the stable coin, has seen its market cap value reach new highs during the month of July. According to a report by on-chain analytics company Into the Block, the world's largest stablecoin is steadily approaching the 40 the 84, excuse me, the 84 billion dollar mark based on data from DeFi Llama cuz why not give it that name. Tether's market cap is up by over 480 million dollars since the month of July indicating an increasing level of adoption. Generally, the stablecoin's total market share has been on the rise for the majority of this year, moving from $66 billion at the beginning of this year to its current level of around 83 or so billion US dollars. In tandem with Tether's market cap growth, into the block also noted that the token circulating supply is up by almost 30% year to date. Interestingly, Tether's market growth has also been reflected in its operator's development. Now, I know someone has their arms folded. This is not the most exciting news in the world to you, but it should be. Do you want to know why? Tether's market cap only increases by exponential amounts whenever a bull run is about to begin. For those of you who are not looking at the screen, this is an article from the 18th of September, 2020. It says Tether's market cap increases almost 4x in 2020 to 15 billion US dollars. It did the exact same thing in 2016, 2017 as well. The news that we received from Tether over the last couple of years is that apparently <clears throat> a large portion of the Tether supply actually comes from larger investors. Uh, apparently it works two different ways. Uh, the people who put money into the market to make new Tether with the company Tether apparently also get a portion of the transaction fees that are happening and therefore this is how they benefit from it. And on the other corner, Apparently, this also takes place there. They want new tether in the market when a new bull run is expected because they're expecting more people to need access to stable coins as the market is moving up and down and people are trading more over the course of a bull run. So how do you make sure that people have a proper stable coin and how do you make sure that they choose yours? You make sure that you make sure that yours is incredibly uh, liquid as tether is. You keep pushing more money into it to increase its market cap. And this is usually also lightly reflective of how much prices tend to rise within the cryptocurrency space as well. <clears throat> if during the 2021 bull run, prices were increasing or the amount of tether that was there was only, only air quotes, around $15 billion worth of tether. And we're now at $84 billion. This is telling me that the people who are running Tether and the outside investors are expecting massive numbers for the cryptocurrency market during the next bull run. So I saw this news. A lot of people tend to skip over stuff like this because it's not as flashy. It's not as like, whoa, that's crazy. There's more Tether. This is, this is always a very good indication. Everything that tends to happen uh, during the course of a four-year cycle, you know, the the all the way up, we move all the way down, we're really depressed, people don't understand why prices aren't moving, and then even to where Bitcoin is just completely, relatively trending sideways in price, these are all the actual precursors to the market moving up during a bull run. Now, this is going to sound stupid, I know, believe me, I understand, the next step is for Bitcoin to move. Once again, I told you it was going to sound dumb. One of two things is going to happen. This is also going to sound dumb. Bitcoin's price is either going to move up or move down, but it's going to be a very specific movement. I think in 2017 and 2020, 2021, I think it was the same. 
Bitcoin trends sideways. It looks like it's not moving. I saw Chang Peng Cao recently in the news talking about how, uh, what do you call it? How, how Bitcoin was the new stablecoin. Ha, ha, ha. Everyone makes the same exact joke every four years. If Bitcoin moves up, it'll be something by like 8 to 12%. I mean, it'll be a rapid rush up and people, you know, everyone's going to be talking about it, yada, yada, yada. The other scenario which tends to happen more is that Bitcoin does a very dramatic dip down. It goes down by 10 to 12%. A drop of a hat, drop of a dime, whatever the, the phrase actually is. Everyone panics. A lot of people end up selling. There's a lot of selling pressure. And a lot of people begin to create shorts on the market, betting against the market. And then Bitcoin skyrockets. This is usually what's happened before. And it probably will take place if everything is the same as every other, um, what do you call it? Every other market cycle. It'll probably happen as we get closer to September. And this is usually the what, what they like to call the last flush out. Remember years ago, we used to have the term like shaking the tree or like the leaves falling from the tree. Uh, the, the indications that we got before is that apparently the more uh, heavy handed, richer people in the market want to flush out as many normal people as possible. And they do so by dramatically making sure that prices kind of drop. People panic. They buy up the, the rich people, buy up the coins that like hit the market at a very lower rate. And then the market begins to propel itself upward. So once again, in keeping with the times and every other, you know, it keeps happening always in cycles. This is why uh, people sometimes ask how I can be so bullish despite what's going on. It's because I've been here for three or four other cycles and they've relatively all been the same. There, there's been no real difference in any of them. And this is just part of it. Prices move sideways. Bitcoin dips very heavily. People get terrified. The market moves back up. And Tether is also a component of that as well. That's the Tether market cap uh, continues to increase the same way as it always has before we've had uh, insane bull runs. And yeah, let's move on. Also in relatively popular news and I and I don't know how how it happened. Accounting giant Deloitte has partnered with blockchain security firm Chainalysis to enhance digital asset tracking and to use them for it literally says for investigations. In a recent blog post, Chainalysis said the collaboration would allow them to assist their mutual clients in addressing compliance challenges in the digital asset ecosystem. We have Chainalysis, we have Into the Block, and we have Glassnode. Glassnode is the other one. Uh, they've begun to partner with larger companies outside of the cryptocurrency space. Deloitte is also a um, one of the large accounting firms. One of the uh, that what are they called? Not money managers. It's something along the I can't remember the exact term for it right now. Like Deloitte is up there with like Fidelity, and, and I lightly say BlackRock, but Deloitte is like in those same. A group of names, if you will. And the idea now is that as cryptocurrencies become more accepted around the world <clears throat> and regulators want to know where a lot of this money is going, they're now partnering with these companies to be able to, to say chain analysis, partnering with these companies to be able to give the government the information that they basically need as money is flowing around. It's annoying. It's lightly dystopian, but it's also... If you look at it through rose-colored blockchain glasses, it's lightly necessary if we want the larger corporations to continue to be in the space. I could honestly care less because I know that crypto will do fine without them. It might take us longer as a market to actually get there. But we are, of course, propelled forward by these companies uh, when they enter the cryptocurrency space like this. The alliance will allow Deloitte's clients to leverage Chainalysis's priority blockchain uh, data set. Industry-leading analytic software and training program, the announcement said. This will enable them to better manage forensic, investigative, and compliance programs related to digital assets. Not much more to talk about. This was one of the more popular news stories. I assume it had to do with the fact that Deloitte is a large name. They've partnered with Chainalysis. Deloitte's uh, clients tend to be other large companies like these 
when you talk about the power of Deloitte, Fidelity, and BlackRock, it's because they also have larger companies as clients. The largest companies in the world tend to use Deloitte, Fidelity, and BlackRock for their services. So if, De if Deloitte is uh, onboarding this kind of service and integrating it into their systems, it's because they have multi-million and billion dollar companies who are looking for their uh, counsel when it comes to investing, but they also need their services if they're going to get into cryptocurrencies to be able to track their transactions to, at the end of the year, be regulatorily compliant and give the information to regulators. That's the general idea behind it. So that's the, yeah, Deloitte News has partnered with Chainalysis. It's it's bullish if you want it to be as far as uh, adoption and uh, dystopian stuff. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on. Also in, okay, I, 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 I think we're getting into this conversation now. XRP's layer two platform known as Evernode has shared an update as it advances in its journey towards the launch. Evernode's layer two smart contract solution via hooks will be linked up to the XRP ledger ecosystem. So I go over crypto news every single day. I have never, ever heard of Evernode, nor the words. Uh, not that it does not exist, not that it is not important. It is more of a, I have never heard of it, and I go over news every single day. In a Twitter update, Evernode stated that it has tentatively scheduled the audit of the Hooks V3 testnet to commence in mid-August. It cites a reason for this. Like other XRP ledger grantees, it will still be waiting on paperwork and funds from Ripple to confirm. For those of you who don't know, Ripple, I want to say in 2018, 2019, maybe even a little bit after that, announced that they had set aside several, I want to say hundreds of millions of dollars, somewhere around, maybe 50 million, I don't remember, it's, 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 an, it's a large number. Uh, for companies who wanted to build on the XRP blockchain, they say it, it's similar to what they do. Like for the like, Cardano does the exact same thing. Like there's like a community uh, pool. There's also this thing for Bitcoin as well. Like there's money granted from larger companies where like if you want to build on Bitcoin and you don't have the money, we can fund you. They do the exact same thing for Ethereum. They have all these like um, hackathons and stuff like that. They find companies who want to be able to build something on these blockchains. You don't have the money. You need maybe 300000 We can give it to you to build on this thing. And this apparently is what Evernode is as well. And a lot of the money for this actually comes from the company Ripple. That they use, as far as I know, they use company funds. And they also use uh, the XRP that's locked up in, in the escrow uh, to also pay companies as well to build. Uh, here's the tweet for it right here. They have, I, I think that's... I think that's Daffy Duck. Yes, yeah, okay, it says right here, Daffy Duck. Uh, I don't know why, but it's a Daffy Duck moving forward, whatever that might mean. In another update, it shared details on the testnet of the Nomad contract. While the development team is processing in its testing, progressing in its testing, it says the Nomad contract is providing, uh, is proving harder to wrangle than expected and... What its nodes on? Okay, I, I, whatever. That's wait. Okay, sure. Why not? So apparently, there's a layer two solution for XRP called Evernode. Uh, this is lit. This is actually news to me because I had never heard of this before. Uh, there are a lot of companies talking about layer two solutions as like another way to build upon the blockchain. I think a lot of blockchains are kind of the words not stuck in their ways. But they're making sure that the main chains themselves don't undergo too many changes or too many updates or upgrades. Because at some point, code may enter it and then it may end up breaking and may fall apart. So therefore, you look to other layer two solutions. I don't know what Evernode does. I would assume it grants them extra opportunities to be able to do smart contracts, to have extra NFTs on top of it, uh, to have extra transactions per second, what have you. But as of now, as of right now, we have yet to hear of like the 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 polygon or the lightning network of um of XRP so maybe this is going to be it but it seems to be in incredibly early stages uh, at least right now so that's the apparently the XRP ledger is going to have a layer 2 scaling solution called Evernode
And yeah, let's move on. Also in, sure, I, 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 sure, why not? Investment platform eToro has officially achieved their registration as a provider for crypto to fiat exchange and other e-wallet custody services in Spain. For some reason, a lot of the news is like, we got a piece of paperwork. We can do this now. We can work here. This is now regulatorily able. eToro, a social investment and multi-asset brokerage company based in Israel, is expanding their connections worldwide. On the 29th of July, the company announced that on the 29th of June, the bank, why so late? The Bank of Spain had approved the registration of eToro as a service provider of exchange of digital currency for fiat currency and electronic wallet custody services. eToro Europe Digital Asset Limited is now registered in the Virtual Asset Service Provider Register maintained by the Bank of Spain under code number D. 848. Uh, Tally Salomon, eToro's regional manager for Iberia and Latin America, okay, commented on the news saying this registration is a testament to our commitment to operating a growing business which prioritizes consumer protection while also nurturing innovation and ensuring access for individual. I hate when they say stuff like this. I know that they do. I know that like, you know, to, to keep to keep up appearances as a company, you have to be like, we are here to help the people. We're here to, you know, but it, it, it always seems so weird to me because they wouldn't be like, we're a terrible company. No one likes us. Can everyone please download our app so we can get some kind of money? Because you, know, you, you, you would never hear the opposite. Of it, it's always like we're here to help, we're here to protect, and it's like, well, you can't say anything otherwise. They continued as a multi asset platform, which has been a long standing supporter of crypto and blockchain technology. We are proud to have received this registration from the Bank of Spain. We will continue to empower our Spanish users, wow, by providing them with access to a diverse range of asset classes, investment tools, and educational resources to enable them to grow their knowledge and wealth. I mean. Ugh, I, 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 I cringed lightly, but I know that they have to say things like this. For whatever reason, under the sun, uh, this was also very popular news because for some reason, people, people getting paperwork or people being fired is always popular news within the cryptocurrency space. I mean, I understand it. I get it. But it's also like a golf clap kind of kind of situation so cool uh eToro I don't use them maybe someone else uses them uh they're now allowed in Spain apparently they couldn't do that before because every country needs their own regulatory something which doesn't I still haven't understood how, okay that's the eToro is now available in Spain and they they talk about how amazing they are because you can't say otherwise news all right, let's move on. Also in news, um, Dubai has granted an operational license to the world's largest crypto exchange known as Binance. The platform announced at the end of July. It was the only exchange to secure this license from authorities within Dubai. Apparently, Dubai has multiple levels of cryptocurrency licenses and exchanges. And I think that uh, Binance has received like the largest one that is actually available. The licensing procedure in Dubai consists of four stages. Binance has passed through three of these stages and is now awaiting for the final boss. The exchange received what is called a provisional MVP license in March 2022. I think it stands for Minimum Viable Product License. I think that's what it stands for. It just spells out MVP, so it sounds fancier. In March 2022, later, it received a preparatory MVP license in September of the same year. Once it demonstrates compliance with the Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority, or VARA's, rules and regulations, it will finally receive the full market product FMP license as well. So, because I remember there being definitely other cryptocurrency exchanges within Dubai. I remember hearing and reading about them. I, I, I You know, people are getting their crypto from somewhere in Dubai. Uh, but apparently... 
Binance now has like the largest title and therefore made the largest amount of news? I'm not really sure. Binance can provide services such as virtual asset exchange and broker dealer services within the region. The exchange has also been uh, provided services to institutional and qualified retail investors as well. The operational, there we go, minimum viable product MVP license provides for Binance users to safely convert crypto assets to fiat under VARA standards in compliance with the Financial Action Task Force FATF rules. The head of Binance's regional market said, our priority is to be able to operate this first fully regulated exchange in and from Dubai. Also, the news is that they have like an actual location in Dubai. Remember how Coinbase and I believe maybe, no, 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 it's the other one. Uh, Gemini, I, I, I think they're trying to also set up shop in a number of other different countries right now. And they're also applying for licenses and Binance is the first. Uh, in and from Dubai, so they have a physical location, in a financial action task force compliant ecosystem, setting the stage for global scalability with uncompromised user assurance. Um, if you haven't been following the trend, this was also one of the most popular news stories out there. This was, uh, this, this rivaled anything that we heard, rivaled anything that we heard about the SEC uh, telling Coinbase to delist all the different altcoins. Uh, this was everywhere. Everyone was talking about it as if it was like the thing that we all needed to hear about and and know about. Um, not that it's not significant, but it's also, excuse, excuse my French here, it's just a piece of paper. Uh, so, you know, cool. I'm glad for them. I'm sure it's a monumental occasion to be legally allowed to do business in one of the richest countries on the planet. Uh, most popular news story, I'm not so sure about that, but also the eToro one, getting a piece of paper to work in Spain, that also was out there as well. So very cool. I'm glad to, uh, what, how should I say this? I am unsurprised that Countries around the world that know how to make money are constantly giving proper cryptocurrency regulation and um, uh, paperwork to companies who can also make that country money. Yeah, that's basically all that I had to say in that sentence. I'm not surprised that Dubai is kind of like at the forefront of all of this because it's it's Dubai. People there know how to make money, so we can only we can only assume that they'll continue to do so. That's the Binance now has an MVP license in uh, Dubai. And yeah, let's move on. In, you know what, sure, why not? You know, live your, live your life. Following a long-term interest in Web3, Ducati, not to be confused with Bugatti, has partnered with Ripple, yeah, and is set to launch their first NFT collection on top of the XRP ledger. For some reason, uh, I've said this about 95 times already, uh, after the ruling of the lawsuit that we got uh, from the judge surrounding XRP, the, 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 the news about Ripple and XRP is like a bit, insane at this point like every day there's at least five different news stories about partners what they're doing uh new things that are coming out and it, i i i don't i don't hate it but i just i find the timing a little weird i feel like everyone all these companies were simply waiting for the judge to say something because there's no way on this green earth i mean lightly green earth now that all this stuff is just happening like randomly out of nowhere. This step is um, the motorcycle company's first venture into the Web3 space and to blockchain technology. Ducati, D-U-C-A-T-I, a renowned motorcycle manufacturer that was created in 1926. Oh, that's when I was born. Is set to enter the world of Web3 by launching its first ever digital collectibles on the XRP ledger. The... Bologna. I want to say Bologna. It's not Bologna. 
I'm going to say Bologna. Bologna-based firm believes this step is essential to strengthening its relationship. I know someone's laughing. So B-O-L-O-G-N-A in American English is baloney. Don't ask why. You know how long? When I was a kid, I remember asking. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember being on the train with my aunt. And I, I looked at her and I was like, why is island spelled Island? She was like, it's just because it is. And I was like, you're, you're an adult. Does it still look like Island to you? And she was like, yeah, but I say island. And I was like, hmm. I assumed that as I got older, these words would morph. Like I would see them differently. And then to find out that baloney is spelled balagna, it still hurts. Like it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So when I see, I know that there's a place called Bologna. It's in Italy. And when I see it, I want to say Bologna and Bologna. And I'm like, the, the company's not based in Bologna. I'm sorry for that segue, but I think it had to be said because I know I'm not, I know I'm not the only one out there who's going through this. There's so many words in English. Have you seen that video? There's a new um, meme video on Instagram where this guy is talking about like um, how to say yes and no in English. So it's like, if you say no, it means no. If you say yes, it means yes. If you say like, no, yeah, it means yeah. If you say yeah, no, it means no. If you say yeah, 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 it means no because it's sarcastic. If you say like, no, 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 it means yes because you're trying to reaffirm like, stop. No, 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 no. Like, yes, I'll do it. It's so like, you never think about it because English as for me is my first language. But I sat there and I was like, that has to be so confusing. If, if any of you are, are also into like a, a light chuckle. I mean, it's, you know, it's 1940s humor. So take it how you will. There's a, there's a, there's a video clip online from an old TV show called I Love Lucy. I used to watch this with my grandmother when I was a kid. They have, there's a, a clip where once again, gigantic segue, but you know, <laughs> hang in there with me where Lucy's talking to her husband, who's trying to read a bedtime story to the kid. But he's from Latin America, and therefore, you know, he has an accent. He's trying to, like, figure out some of the words. And he's reading through the book, and he's pronouncing things as they should be pronounced. But we don't realize that all these words, like, throw and through and, and like, should be pronounced like throw. Like the word, like, live and live, spelled exactly the same, but we pronounce them differently depending on, like, read and read. So many things like that. Anyway, if you get a chance, you can find the clip on it. it. Like Type in like, I love Lucy, Ricky Reads or something like that. You'll definitely find it. I don't know how we got there from, uh, from, from NFTs being on top of the XRP ledger, but that's the magic. That's the magic of words. The firm believes that the step is essential to strengthening their relationship within the global community. Claudia Domenicali, Cali? Okay. CEO of Dugatti commented on the move by saying entering web three is another way to get closer to the du ducat ducatsi ducatsi okay community by further extending the number of services offered to them it also represents an opportunity to meet and make ourselves known to a new community of nft enthusiasts giving them the opportunity to live you wow to live Unique Ducati style experiences and collect the digital assets that we will develop exclusively for the new dimension of the brand. Uh, so no word as to what these are, what they're going to look like. I think some of them are going to be uh, animated and or video like in the very beginning. Um, also, very popular news simply because the word ripples there and the word XRP is there. And now you have Ducati linked with it as well, um, I wonder where this will lead. I think, I think this is the first large company who has announced that they're going to be building on top of the XRP blockchain for their NFTs. So that's also quite significant as many of them tend to choose Ethereum slash Polygon only. But cool. Why not? Very awesome. I hope it works out for them. Um... I probably will not be getting any. That's just a personal choice. I, I tend to exclusively buy from, from Vivi. Um, you know, got some uh got some Lamborghinis from them as well. So, you know, that's um that's how I roll. That's the Ducati has partnered with uh Ripple and is building on the XRP ledger 
to launch their first ever NFT news. And yeah, let's move on. Rightio. As always, um, I hope that you have all enjoyed. I hope that you all are having a great day, great morning. Great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank every single one of you for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.